Hello Instagram, nice to see everybody today. As always, I'll wait a minute for everyone to come in here. So I've had a busy morning. I just finished doing a Zoom talk with the students over at IU at Indiana University. So that was really fun. And now we're just kind of chilling. It's Friday afternoon, so I just wanted to get a nice kind of easy warm up in this afternoon. Hello everyone. So it's been a busy week for me. I've been doing kind of like a lot of non-trombone things. I've had like a photo shoot and a video shoot and then a big video I had to get out. And then as well as that talk over at IU. So a lot of time away from the horn this week. So for today's warm up, whenever I have a lot of time away from the horn, I like to just take it like really slow and really just worry about the idea of flow and getting the air moving. So I kind of have different warm ups depending on what kind of week I'm having. For example, last week was super playing heavy. I was doing a lot of recording. So when I was warming up, it was just real quick. It was like 15, 20 minutes being very efficient, knowing that I had a lot of playing to do for the day. So today's gonna be kind of the opposite. We're just gonna kind of take it slow. It's gonna be super casual. So feel free to ask questions along the way about any of the exercises, or you can ask questions about other stuff. If you are feeling so inclined, you can ask to join the chat, um, join the live stream to ask your question, or if you wanted to play something for us, uh, you know, if you have a question about one of the exercises and you wanted to give a playing example, that way I can better help you, we can do that. Again, just really chill today. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do for our warm up, I start in this place every time, is long tones, you guys know it. So. I like to start on a low B flat. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna play a low B flat. Low B flat, sorry. <laughs> we're gonna take a play a low B flat. So big breath in and then just let's play. So when I play this very first note, I think of just breathing in, making sure I have no tension in my body, and I like to close my eyes and just listen to my sound. Make sure I'm really happy with it before I move on. Sometimes I like to move my body around just to kind of check everything out. So now that we got that first note, let's go ahead and do a long tones, um, kind of a variation on the Remington long tone where we go down, um, you know, one, two, one, three, one, four, you know, etc. And we're just going to take a huge breath in and let's just gliss the whole thing today. <laughs> So that's the example. Just everything gliss, lots of air, lots of flow. That's the word for today, it's gonna be flow. So getting all the way out there to set up the position. Oh wow, I was moving the body like a meditation. Uh, yeah, I think playing trombone can be like a meditation for sure, especially doing these warm up exercises, these long tones like this. Um, so something that I've liked doing, get, making sure I'm getting all the way out to seventh position is something I've kind of been practicing lately or all the time because I have kind of short arms. So really making sure that I get a true, um, that true uh, note out there in seventh position. So in this case, the low E, I'm, I'm kind of listening for that interval, right? The B flat down to that E. So everyone think about what that interval is. Play one more time. <laughs> So I'm always really thinking about getting that true interval to kind of ring. And does anyone know what that interval is? 
I'm just going to tell you as soon as we move on. It's a tritone. So that is kind of a interval that we don't hear all like too often in music, right? We spend a lot of time practicing our perfect fourths and our perfect fifths. But I think the tritone kind of gets ignored. But it's kind of a cool sound to be able to recognize. So I'm really into this idea of finding melodies that we can use to identify certain intervals in music. So one way that I like to think of that tritone sound, making sure I'm getting that note to speak out in seventh, is I always think of, see if you can figure out what this is. Just from those three notes. Does anyone know what it is? <laughs> Do it one more time. All right, it's Maria from West Side Story. So I always think of that when I kind of get this B flat to E natural sound. Obviously I was playing, you know, at, out the octaves out of context, but I always think of that. So now going with this idea of flow, um, not only are we doing the long tones nice and glissy, is I like to use those melodies to play a flow exercise. And what a flow exercise is, is we're just focusing on the air. So we're not getting super nitty gritty about the articulations or the note lengths or anything like that. We are just thinking of taking a huge breath of air in and then a huge breath of air out all in one breath. So like a big legato phrase. So we're gonna use that uh, melody from Maria to kind of play a flow legato phrase. So I'll teach it to you really quick, it's pretty easy. So we'll start on, we'll do it in B flat first. We'll start on that B flat. We got our tritone there and then just go up to the F. Right? Hi Gmo. <laughs> So then we're just going to repeat that. Right? And then all we do is go up one more note in the scale. So we would be going up from F to G. So let's play that much this, uh, that far. Okay, so I kept it kind of smooth. Now let's try to do that much in one breath. So again, we should be taking a huge deep breath in and then if we were to just blow this phrase on our, ha our hand. The air doesn't stop. That's kind of the point here. This is what we're going for. So let's play the first half of that together. <laughs> Um, now we're going to move on. Let's play the rest of it. So uh, what do we got so far? Okay, so from there we're going to go down the scale. And the first scale is going to include that, um, that tritone, so the E natural. So just go down the scale from F with that E natural one more time. Right? Now we're going to go down the scale again, but let's play the E flat this time. Did you kind of get that? Just down the scale. First time with the E natural, second time with the E flat. Let's try just those two scales going down. And then there's just two more notes left in this little phrase. We'll just go back to the one and B flat and then up to the third, the D. Okay, so let's try to put the whole thing together now. Uh, do your best to try to follow along. This is good for your ear training and figuring out melodies on the fly. So let's try to do the whole thing now. Again, just let the air flow. <laughs> Sometimes I like to challenge myself and try to do the whole thing kind of in um, like just take one breath in the middle and kind of really make the whole thing go. But yeah, that's the idea. 
Okay. Does anyone have any questions so far about anything? No. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We'll do that one more time. All right. Uh, let's do one more time in B flat, like we just did. One more time. See if you can get it this time. happen that time okay so let's move on with our long tones let's go up to the next partial let's do F and let's do the same thing we did with B flat just really glissy just think of the air flowing okay here we go so the Remington um on F <laughs> Let's do that one more time so we can hear that that interval that tritone so F down to low B natural lots of air okay so now we're gonna do the same thing with that melody from West Side Story but this time we're gonna play it starting on an F so think about it we're gonna do some transposing now um, so Think about going F up to that B natural, right, for the tritone. Right, so we have one, that tritone, and then up to the fifth, which is a C. Okay, and then we just repeat that, right? Just up one more note. That's the first half of it. Try that on your own real quick, if you're following along. All right, um, then let's move on for there. Now we'll do our scale going down. First time we're gonna have that um, B natural in there. Right, so just down the scale and then back up to the G. Second time on the scale, we'll add in the B flat. Then there's just those two notes at the end, the F and then to the third, which is A. Okay, let's do that second half now. So down the scale twice. together now so this one might be a little easier for everyone because we're up in a, like a little bit higher we're up a fifth higher which is kind of a more natural range for the trombone so it doesn't take as much air as it did down in the low octave but still flow is the idea just try to blow your air through the phrase don't really worry about articulation um, okay here we go with these okay we are just blowing our air through the phrase and this is a great melody to kind of take this all around the horn we did two keys today F and B flat but you can play this anywhere on the horn it would be awesome if you could do it in all 12 keys you can use it to get into the higher register playing it up half step at a time or you can get down to the lower register if you do it like down a half step at a time totally up to you does anyone have any questions before we move on hi everyone thanks for being here Get a sip of water. Hi, everyone.
Okay, so moving on with our long tones, kind of flow idea, let's go ahead and we'll start on a middle B flat and go down into the lower register. So we'll do B flat, F, B flat. This is a super simple exercise, but it's actually one of my favorites while I'm warming up. It really just helps me to relax down into the lower register. Um, and the idea here is we're gonna do a lip slur. So just B flat, F, B flat. But the idea is we don't want to push to get down to each lower partial, right? We, right? we don't want any tension like that, any pushing to get those lower notes to come out. What we wanna do is just think of breathing in and if you fill all the way up, You kind of want like when you fill up with that air, it's just going to come out. And that's the approach we want here. We just want to kind of fall down those three partials. I'll show you the first one. Again, this is another one that I like to do. Kind of I close my eyes and just really assess if I have any tension anywhere and I try to eliminate it. That's why I like kind of doing this exercise at the beginning of the warm up, um, So I can just really assess if I have any tension anywhere. So let's do the whole thing. Let's go down the slide. Same exercise and that bottom note, we're just gonna hold it out and really kind of just live in that sound, okay? Going for a good sound here. If you're going through your warm up, make sure like if something doesn't come out, take the time to go back and do it again. It's totally fine. This time is for you to kind of make sure you're going through and you are getting better at stuff. So don't worry if you have to do something again. Um, okay, so that's kind of like the long tone session, right? We did some Remingtons. Uh, we played a few like flow melodies. Now let's go after, so after I do long tones, I like to go to the lower register. So now let's work on our lower register a bit. One of my favorite ways to work in the low register is this idea of utilizing false tones. So these are the notes that kind of exist in between that low partial, right? From the B flat down to the low E um, and into the, like in between the pedal register. So if you had a trombone with an F attachment, this would be your trigger range. But we can still play that even if we're on a straight horn. So we're gonna just gliss down with our lips, kind of like a, a lip bend. We'll go from B flat to that F. Um, this is what it'll sound like. Okay, so the B flat to the F. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure if my computer was still recording. Uh, B flat to the F again. So try to get that F to speak. If you need like a pitch reference, you can play it in sixth. Right, it's that note that we're trying to hit in first position. Okay, so once you can kind of get it, let's kind of go up, uh, we're gonna go bah. So we're gonna go up and down, and the idea is to make it like really soupy or really kind of slow. I'll show you. And you. 
you might want a little bit of slide movement. So when you do do these false tones, you kind of got to move your slide out a little farther. It's kind of like the same as if you were pressing down your F um, attachment. So let's do that one more time. So just make it really like soupy and gooey. This always makes my lips feel really good. Now let's do that down the slide. There we go. So again, the seventh position can be a challenge for me, uh, but I still try to do it anyways. So yeah, that's the idea with those with those false tones there. Okay. Um, so really just getting really soupy and gooey and it's good to kind of warm up your lips. It always feels good to me. Um, all right. So now we're going to use those false tones as a connection down to the pedal register. So this one might be kind of difficult, um, but we'll try a couple of them just to see. So basically, basically we're going to use that false tone to get us down to the pedal register. So we're going to do um, uh, B flat, F, and then pedal B flat. <laughs> So you can kind of use that as like a bridge as you as you slur down. Let's try that one more time. Okay, and you can challenge yourself and try to do that all the way down the slide. Maybe we'll do like one or two more together. Uh, let's do it on A, see if we can get that pedal A. Let's do that one more time. So the goal is to get those kind of kind of connected. It can be a good warm up exercise. Um, another way to do your pedals and kind of get them lower and lower is to just start in first and do like one of the Remington long tones, but just on the pedals. So that's what we're gonna do. Hello. We're gonna do a pedal B flat, and then we're just gonna gliss down one note at a time to try to extend our pedal register. So I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna take a whole lot of air. So just take the biggest breath you can and really just try to blow down into those pedal notes. So let's try um, B flat to A first. Okay. Keep going. Let's see if we can do the E. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that one takes a lot of air to get all the way out to seventh position, but still you should be trying for it every day just to try to get lower and lower. Ah, Gary says, is it unusual to have to tongue the pedal? No, I can't slur to them. Uh, no, not at all. A lot of people find it easier to tongue. Um, you can certainly do that exercise tongue to start out. Um, I just kind of like slurring into it, but it's definitely a challenge. So if you can't slur it, tongue it first. So let's go back to the other one we were doing, the B flat, F, B flat. So if you can't slur it, try tonguing each note. See, that's harder for me to tongue that false tongue. Yeah, for me, it was actually harder to tongue it. That I don't really practice uh, tonguing those false tones too much, but now I guess I should. Let me try one more time, tongue. Okay. 
Yeah, so you can try it. You can try it both ways. Um, I would tongue it first and then challenge yourself to do the lip slur. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb for any time you're playing lip slurs and you can't quite get it. Do it tongued first. That way, it really lets you center the notes and then add in the slurs. Somebody's asking mouthpiece. This is a Bach 5G S. So the S stands for a shallow cup. So it's a Bach 5G, but it's just a little bit shallower. Okay. Moving on. All right, so we did some long tones. We did some low register playing. Now the next thing I want to do is work on some tonguing. So I have my metronome down here. I'll get that. Um, so the first scale we'll do, let's do C minor. So this is something that I've been trying to do a lot lately. Um, I feel like a lot of us fall into this trap of only playing our major scales over and over and over, and we kind of neglect everything else. So when I'm warming up, I always usually make it a priority to do some other kind of scale that's not my major scale. Um, that's not to say that we can forget our major scales, but I just like to change it up. So let's do C minor. Um, the first scale I like to pick is usually like kind of down in the lower end of the horn. That way I kind of get that register um, kind of going. So we'll do C minor. And speaking of melodies, one of my favorite melodies uh, to play in C minor is, uh, let's see if you guys can guess this one. <laughs> whenever I think C minor. I think it's great to have your favorite melodies, like have a favorite melody for every key. It really helps you just kind of like recognize that key immediately and just kind of get comfortable with it. And that's just kind of like a little game I like to play. I always think of um, melodies for the different keys. Um, okay, she said Lord of the Rings. Close, it was Game of Thrones. <laughs> kind of has that, same, that uh, same sound though, same feel. All right, so let's do our C minor scale. So if you don't know the notes to that yet, think about it. Pulling up my mat here. Or we can go over them real quick. So we got C, D, E flat. So the relative major to C minor is E flat. So we have three flats in this, okay? They are B flat, E flat, and A flat. All right, so three flats in C minor. Um, let's start off slow. So 70 beats a minute. And this is one of my favorite tonguing exercises that I like to do. Um, I'll demonstrate really quick. Okay, if you caught what that was. So we're doing eighth notes. One and two and dun 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 bum 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 So I guess eighth notes it would be like kind of in a two four feel or a cut time feel of two two. Bum 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 Okay. Um here we go. Let's try that together. Here's 70 beats a minute. We'll just see my one, two, ready? Okay, I'll catch on to that one. So that's one of the tonguing exercises I like to do, and you can do that on multiple different scales, any scale you want really. We just started at 70 beats a minute, so I'm starting slow for kind of a comfortable tempo for everybody, but obviously the goal is to move that up faster and faster. So we'll kind of keep it at 70 beats per minute right now, but another kind of variation you can do for tonguing is just playing the scale up and down. So I did it up and down twice, right? At this tempo, 70 beats a minute. Here we go again. Okay, that's the idea. So the, those are kind of two exercises I like to do for tonguing. Um, 
So let's go ahead and move a little bit higher up on the horn and we're also gonna turn up the met. Um, so it was 70 beats. Again, I'm trying to start in a really comfortable place. So obviously if this is super slow for you, you're like, this is boring. When you do this by yourself, start faster. Um, ideas always get faster and faster and faster with these um, to always practice on a faster single tongue. So um, that's why I love using the Met when I practice my tonguing, just so I have like an honest representation of where I'm at, like how, how fast, you know, that I'm going and so I can track it. So let's just move it up. Let's not get too crazy. Let's just go up to 75 beats a minute and we're gonna do, let's do, let's start on F, but we're not gonna do major. Let's do Mixolydian. So all that is is just a flat seven. So think about it, just F major scale. All we're doing is we're gonna flat the seven. So it's gonna be an E flat. So let's do that first variation where we um, did the eighth notes first. I'll play for you first. Okay, so y'all got that. We had the E flat, so the flat seven out there. And we're practicing this just so we can get our ears used to different sounds, right? If we only play in major all the time, that's all we're gonna be used to hearing, right? So use your warm up as an opportunity to get used to playing different scales, right? Minor or, you know, this. Um, Mixolydian scale. Um, so let's go ahead and, what was I gonna say? Oh, also, this is a great opportunity. I've been working on this with a lot of my students. If ever we have this combination, it shows up a lot um, in trombone and in a lot of different keys. If ever we have the C, C, D, E flat. That combination or those three notes in order show up a lot, right? We want to get used to the D out and forth for this. So in this scale. Let's play that D out and forth position so we can practice doing it. Um, as you get faster and faster, it, it's only going to help you if you're used to this, the way this feels out here. Okay. So let's try that one more time. The same pattern with the eighth notes. Here we go. Two, ready? Okay. Now let's try the other one where we do the scale up and down twice. Okay, so we had um, two different ways of doing that. Now let's go ahead, let's go faster. So another thing you can do as you get faster in tempo is you can shorten the phrases. And this helps you to be able to play kind of a little faster. So let's do... Let's see, let's see 85. So we're going up 10 clicks. So. Now let's go faster. I think you guys can do it. Here's 90 beats a minute. And what we're gonna do is just play those really short phrases. Da 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 da, da 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 da, da 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 da. But we're gonna add kind of another challenge onto this. We are gonna play the scale in thirds this time. Let me get a drink again. I don't know about you all, whatever I play, my mouth gets really dried out. What is your suggestion for mouthpiece? Excellent question. Somebody already asked that. Um, it really depends on what kind of horn you have and what kind of music you play and what part you're playing. Um, I think that can all, you know, be different for which mouthpiece you use. So let me know what kind of horn you play on and what kind of music you play and I'll let you know. Um, this is a Bach 5GS. That's what I'm playing on today with this horn. I really like Bach mouthpieces. Um, I really just, I like the, the rounder rim on them. They feel better on my face and I feel like the rounder rim is better for flexibility as far as being able to do lip slurs and stuff like that. Also, I feel like the rounder rim helps with endurance. Like it, it doesn't like kind of cut on your face as much. So that's why I prefer the Bach 
back rims. Um, you will, there's stuff that you won't get from it though. Um, with the rounder rim, you sometimes can lose the clarity of an attack. So if you are looking for a sound that has like a really crisp like attack, that's harder to get with a rounder rim. So it's kind of just, um, you know, what you prefer. For tenor trombone, okay, is it a large bore trombone or a small bore like this one? I'll get, I'll get to your question. Um, all right, so let's do, what did I say we we're doing? Oh yeah. Um, right, so we're gonna do these really short phrases. The idea is just a, and we're gonna do that F, mixolydian scale, but we are gonna do it in thirds, so skipping the notes. Um, so to do it in thirds, um, so it would be F, a, G, B flat. I think you might have heard this pattern before. Okay, we're skipping notes, right? Now it has the E flat in there, so it's a little bit of a different sound than we're used to, but that's why we're doing it. We're training our ears to kind of hear these different kind of sounds. So let's do that with this tonguing exercise. Okay, I think of a really clear um, tongue. Just blow the air through the phrase. Okay, here we go. One, cool, ready? speed up it's easier to get like those really short phrases so for instance that was 90 beats like if we were to go up to a hundred so right then we like 110 Okay, so that's kind of the idea how you can use the metronome to kind of help you um, with your tonguing. So when I'm warming up, yeah, we did our long tones, we did our low register, I like to do tonguing and articulation. I spend the majority of my time on single tonguing just because I think it's super important to have like a really fast single tongue. And if you get your single tonguing really fast, um, it just opens up a lot more opportunities for you. Of course, there are other styles of tonguing out there that you need to be practicing too, but um, yeah, today we're just gonna do single tonguing. Uh, so let's move on. Let's go ahead and, going back to this flow idea for today, right? Taking it easy, just getting the air moving. Um, one of my other favorite kind of flow exercises is called Beautiful Sounds from the Brass Gym. You might've heard this one. Let me play it for you, see if you've heard it. Okay, we're back, got another device going. Okay, so beautiful sounds in C. Hello. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start in C major, like I said, um, and I'll just teach it to you by rote for today. So. Did you see what we did there? So we just went, if we're talking in numbers, we went one, two, one, seven, one. Okay? Again, going back to this idea of flow, just keep the air moving. So, now we're going to do an arpeggio going up. 
So this exercise does kind of require your knowledge and your major skills and your arpeggios and everything, so make sure you're practicing those. All right, we got our C arpeggio there, all right? C, E, G. Then we're just going to play a major seventh. And that'll creep us up to that one. So let's kind of put that all together. That's the first half of that phrase. Okay, going back to the flow idea, all in one breath, just keep the air moving. You can utilize natural slurs as much as possible. Make this super legato. This is all about the air. All right, so now we're going to go back down, learn the second part of it. So if we're starting on the C on the root, now we're kind of doing the same thing backwards. So we'll go from C to D. Okay, so we're in C major. One, two, one, seven, one. See how it's the same thing, but backwards a little bit? This is a nice warm up. Oh, class. I thought you were gonna say this warm up was a classic. Can't read. Thank you, Gary. All right, here we go. So we're doing that, and then going down, we're going to go to the six. so that's a little bit of a different sound, or that A natural. That's kind of the only tricky note on the way down, and then we're going to use our arpeggio to get us back down from there. See how we did that there? Ba da 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 da, six, five. Three, one. I can't sing that low, but you get it. Okay, so take a minute on your own, kind of figure that out. Can you get a drink of water? All right, let's do that together. So this is in C. Okay, give it your best try. Here we go. I did that in two breaths but as we get higher up in the horn you can challenge yourself to do this like whole thing in one breath um this is also great i would show you right now if i had a device available <laughs> but they're all being utilized right now this is great to do with a drone oh my gosh it will expose like all the intonation stuff so these are great to do with drones to really make sure you're locking into each um each pitch okay Especially kind of trickier notes to tune like the the third uh, the major third where you have to lower This is great to do with the drone. Uh, my favorite drone to use is called it's on YouTube It's called cello drones. So definitely check that out. It's just really soothing. It's just Cellos playing long tones and I don't know. I really like listening to it uh, when I'm doing my drone work also um, Tonal energy tuner has a great drone on there as well Okay, so this exercise, I believe the way it's written in the brass gym is it goes up, like it goes up a half step, then down a half step, then up, then down, then up, then down. So it kind of like spreads out like this. And that's a great way to do it. Um, but for today, let's just kind of go up by half steps, just a little easier. So that was C major. Let's try to do D flat. So this is, it might be a little harder, but let's like take a second and figure it out, right? So when you're transposing, instead of thinking note, 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 think of the numbers, right? I kind of told you some of them from last time. So let's think through this together. So we're starting on D flat. Right, that pattern, pattern stays the same. D flat, E flat, D flat, F. Um, sorry, C. Okay, then we go off our arpeggio. And we just get that major seven to the one. start to kind of come out. You'll, you'll start to feel the patterns on the horn. Okay, now let's do the second half of it. So we start on our D flat on the one, go up to the two, one, right? Alright, one, two, one, seven, one. Psyching myself out because I'm 
think about what to say next. Um, but yeah, the six is the, that kind of weird note, right? So B flat. Okay, let's try D flat together. Again, we are utilizing as many natural slurs as possible and just thinking of the flow, thinking, uh, keep, thinking of keeping things nice and smooth. Again, this is one of my favorites to do um, when I just want to kind of take it easy and have a nice, long, relaxing warm up. It's, I, I just love this exercise. Um, so yeah, let's do one more together. And this time we're not going to walk through it. Let's see if we can just kind of play it. So this is D major. Think about the key. Think about the pattern. Let's just try to do it and see what happens. Here we go. How'd you do? <laughs> I'm going to get another drink of water here. Okay, I don't know, let's, let's just keep going. Let's keep going. So let's do E flat. Again, we're not gonna walk through it. Just try your best, try your best to follow along. The six is the tricky one. I think that's a sound that we're not um, usually used to hearing, right? So, um, and it's also good like practicing those descending arpeggios, right? We, we do this, hello. Um, we do this with our scales and our arpeggios. We get super good at playing them up, but it's like we forget to play them coming down. <laughs> it's like we just love to go up and never come down. So th this idea, um, what key were we just in? E flat, right? So that's that descending arpeggio, but we're hitting that uh, the sixth, right? I think it's just not a sound we're used to hearing super a lot, so that's why it's kind of um, just hard. But that's why it's good to practice it because you have to play all sorts of intervals in your music, right? Hello from, hi from Mexico, hello. I wish I could go to Mexico right now, go to the beach. <laughs> it's hailing at my house right now. <laughs> okay, uh, so we did E flat, let's keep going. Let's try to do E natural. Okay, try, think about, so knowing that the sixth is the tricky note, think about what the sixth is gonna be to this. Think about it, what's the sixth if we're in E major? that C sharp, right? Okay, so think about it. Here we go. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, this pattern, I, I love it. You can do it all the way up, all the way up to the high register if you want to. Sometimes I do that uh, using this as a range exercise, going all the way up, or you can do it to work into your low register, going all the way down. It's a super cool pattern to know, and it just really helps you get that air flowing, which is kind of the theme for today. How long have you played trombone? Oh, a long time. <laughs> Maybe like twenty years. So it's been a while. I started playing trombone when I was um, right before I went to high school. So, yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Let's see, what have we done so far? Long tones, low register, some articulations and some tonguing, working on our tonguing speed. Then we did a few more kind of flow kind of exercises. Now let's go into flexibility. So making sure that we're doing some lip slur exercises. Uh, the first one, let's just do... Um, okay, so just a simple B flat F, B flat. And we'll take that down the slide, okay? So when 
like to do two different kinds. I like to make sure I'm doing all the partials, right? So like a huge lip slur, or I'll do two like really fast. So right now we're kind of building in this larger kind of lip slur. So that was three partials we did. So let's do now, let's add one more partial in. So we're gonna go up to the D. So did you hear that? B flat F, B flat F, B flat D, B flat. So we're just extending into one more partial, okay? So let's do that down the slide. can you do? <laughs> I could do a lot of songs. Um, you can go check out my YouTube channel, Lisa Liz Trombone. I have a bunch of songs and videos over there. Uh, today we're doing a little warm-up class, so we're focusing on warm-ups for today. And then, hi Kazumi. <laughs> so Kazumi says, hi from Japan. I love Blast. Oh, me too. I, I miss doing that show, so I'd love to do it again someday. <laughs> All right, um, so now let's extend one more partial. Um, so let's get up to that F, par F partial. Okay, did you hear that? Okay, and we'll take that down all the way out to seventh. Ready? progress with these same as as when we are tonguing is using a metronome that way you can track your progress and how fast you're getting I'm just currently using all my devices right now so I can't pull up my met but yeah you can definitely use your metronome to track your progress make sure you're getting faster and faster with your lip slurs <laughs> I'm assuming that's justice who wrote that last message <laughs> He says, sounds great. Have you ever considered a career in the U.S. Air Force bands? I'll, I'll think about it and I'll let you know. <laughs> I hope that's justice, by the way. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, let's see. Where are we? Yeah, let's do another one that kind of gets us into the higher kind of partials. So let's do B flat uh, D F. <laughs> So again, now we're kind of going back into the idea of doing a smaller amount of partials, but a little quicker. So we'll do it two times in a row. It'll sound like this. Okay, you hear how that goes? So we'll just do it two times. And you can tongue each time you do it. So for this one, we're going to go all the way down to seventh position. And then when we come back up, we're going to tongue each note. Okay, does that make sense? When we come back up, we'll tongue everything. Okay, so for flexibility, it's important not only to get our lip slurs really good, but it's also important to be able to tongue when you're doing your flexibility stuff too, okay? So we'll do slurring going down, tonguing coming back up. Okay, here we go. Exercise 
exercise that I like to do um, as far as kind of going up farther among the partials and then kind of getting close back together. Um, the other style of flexibility exercises is just going between two partials but doing it for speed. So one of my favorite exercises to do this is also from the brass gym. I mentioned it earlier. It's called lip flips. Um, we'll keep it kind of like a simplified version of the exercise today. But um, so we're going to go between two partials. Let's do B flat and D above the staff. Uh, listen to how it sounds. Okay, did you catch that? Da, 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 da. And doing it that fast, that's going to set up being able to do our lip trills, uh, which you will definitely need at some point. Okay, so let's kind of do that. Um, we'll just go down to fifth position and then, I don't know, let's just go down the slide. Let's do that in all seven positions. Okay, here we go. Let's try it. Ready? <laughs> tempo that's comfortable for you. Same thing with all these exercises, you can do that with your mat, so you can track your progress, um, find a comfortable tempo, and then speed it up gradually. The other thing with that too is um, you can do that same exercise with any two partials. So like, and they don't even have to be right next to each other either. Um, but so you can go down, right? Maybe like up to B flat. <laughs> Okay, so is that idea? You can go up, so like we can keep going higher. So maybe let's do like D. I like this exercise. Yeah, me too. It, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's super fun and it's good for flexibility. So um, you can go higher. So maybe like a, a D to F. Right? Or you can like keep going higher, right? So you can do this kind of anywhere on the horn, but it's just really good to build up that faster lip slur. So again, with the lip slurs and the flexibility, two different ideas. You want to go wide across all the partials to make sure you can connect the registers. And then you want to get really like nitty gritty and just do two and try to do them as fast as you can. So that's the idea with the flexibility. Now, last thing I like to do in any warm up session is get into the higher register. So let's go ahead and do that. And before I work into the higher register, um, so, so far today, we have played, I always keep track. It's like, I want to do the lowest note I can play and the highest note I can play every day. So, so far, I think the lowest note we've played together was a pedal A, I think. Oh no, we glissed down. We did all the pedals tried to get down to that pedal E. And then the highest note we played so far was just an F, right? That's not true. We played a G, a high G when we were doing the uh, scale in thirds. But yeah, so before we go all the way up to the high register, let's kind of bridge the gap. And by the gap, I mean this range of the F up until that high B flat, okay? We wanna make sure we're kind of getting those notes. Um, we've played them. So let's just do... Uh, notes a lot of attention. Maybe let's go up chromatically now. Okay, this is a register that, or a, a spot of a register, right? It's only like a really small part that needs a lot of attention, especially for, for intonation, right? Like all these, the, all these notes here, we got like the, the F sharp or the G flat, the G, um, the A flat, the A, all of these notes can be like super tricky intonation wise. So these, this is a good register to kind of spend a lot of time in and really get all those notes kind of figured out. I definitely view that as like kind of the bridge between the, 
like maybe the mid register and the high register, right? That F to that B flat. So making sure you're playing some stuff in there. And then let's just get all the way up to the high register for today. Let, let's keep it simple. Uh, that was the idea for today was this idea of like flow and simplicity and just let the air move. So let's just do some glisses. Um, one of my favorite ways to get up to the high register, um, usually for a quick warm up, but let's just kind of throw it in for today. So all we're going to do is we're going to play F, middle F, find it out in six. Glissing up. Now we have that B flat in first. Find it out in fifth. Gliss up to the D. Find the D in fourth. There's our F. We're going to find it out in sixth. up to that B flat. Let's try that again. One more time. Yeah, so that's the idea with the glisses. You can, you can obviously keep going too, right? Let, let's do one more. So we'll find the, that B flat. Out in fifth there and gliss up to the D, right? That's, that's kind of hard to find out there. to that high D and then let's try, let's do one more let's try to find that D in fourth and then up to the high F yeah <laughs> that, that D is kind of really hard to find out out there in fourth position but you get the idea right so you just start find it out in the lower position and then then gliss up and what this is going to do is going to train your lips to kind of play as you get into the higher register. Um, so there are two main concepts I like to think of when I get up high. And the first one is like the O to E idea, right? O E. O E. Say, so you can kind of think of that when you're going up. The other concept that helps some people is by thinking of the direction of the air, right? So as you go up, uh, like thinking of like if I was blowing air on my hand, the, the air stream goes down as you go up. So try that. Um, like the thing that helps me more is the O to E idea, but for some people the air stream thing helps. It's just kind of whatever works for you. So um, check that out on your own. See how it feels. Okay, and play around with that. And there, there's no limit with that, right? Like we went up to the high F, but by all means, like keep going. Um, if you have any more questions about that, like more detailed, I have a um, video on my channel called how to play high on trombone explained. And I kind of go over that exercise in way more detail um, as well as, I think I tried to go up to the high B flat in that one. So, so yeah, um, that's kind of it for today. It's kind of a casual, slow warm up. We really focus on like the flow studies idea, right? Getting the air moving. Um, if anyone has any questions, I can take questions for a few minutes here. Let's get a drink of water. All right, anyone have any questions? I had everyone vote this week whether they would rather have a live stream or a warm up and warm up won, but everyone still, there were a lot of votes for a Q and A. So if anyone in here has any questions, now's your time to ask. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and end the live stream for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I definitely want to do more live streams here on Instagram. Let's see. Oh, Peter has a, oh, Jazzbone PT has a question. Um, are you a natural high note player or did you work for every half step? Very good question, Peter. Uh, by the way, so Peter has an awesome YouTube channel you should check out. Um, Peter Tijerina Trabone, I believe it is. 
Uh, he has a lot of cool videos on there. So go check that out if you haven't yet. Uh, so Peter, I would say I had to work for every half step. I had an awesome jazz trombone teacher in college. His name is Ryan Haynes. He played in the... Ryan's going to get mad at me if I mess this up. Falconeers, I believe. One of the Air Force fans. And he was like a crazy... I mean, he is a crazy high note player. Um, he can just play crazy high. It's ridiculous. But he was definitely very into that idea of like a routine. So when I was in college, he would get the like jazz the tiny little jazz trombone studio together and he would walk us through this like routine and he did it every day. And it was like um, uh, a high note exercise that he did up in, up in half steps. And he was like a firm believer of making sure alto trombone range next. Uh, the alto trombone is in the closet and that's where it stays. <laughs> All right, sorry, Peter. Um, and yeah, he would walk us through this every day and it takes like 10 or 15 minutes to do, but yeah, he was a firm believer in that and that idea of like up a half step at a time. So I really, in college, I started implementing that. Um, and I just kind of got a better high range from doing his exercises. So I guess I can show you what it was real quick. It's actually just from the, the Arbin's book. So it's a super simple exercise. But the way um, Ryan would have us do it was we would start at the bottom of the register, uh, maybe on like a, like, um, a low B flat or something. And it, it's from the Arbins. And it just goes up. Um, I'm sure you'll hear it instantly. <laughs> Scale, all right, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, five, one, four. Um, and the idea was like tonguing the bottom note each time and slurring up to the next note each time. Uh, you know, like. All right, like utilizing that slur there. Um, and he would have us do it at 108 beats a minute. Like I, I remember the exact um, speed and I think we would uh, we wouldn't rest in between but then usually after the first octave or so we would take a rest um, and then from there but I mean that I, I did that like every day when I was in college and if you start at the bottom of your register and go up to you know the idea is to max out right and the cool thing about that pattern is when you go up to, you go until like the fourth won't speak anymore. So it's like, even if that fourth um, is still coming out, like you're trying for the fifth and the sixth, if that makes sense. Um, and I, yeah, I did that every day, like religiously for a long time. And that, I think that's what developed my, my high range. So yes, to answer your question, I feel like I, I, I worked for every half step. Um, and it, It'll go away too. Like I feel like if I don't, if I have a week where I'm not playing a lot or not working into my range a whole lot, like it'll definitely, you know, diminish. And you know, I still don't think I can play like super high, um, but that exercise definitely helped me. Yeah, so funny how we're all obsessed with range. I know. <laughs> I don't know where that starts, but uh, it definitely starts somewhere. Especially, I think it's all brass players, especially trumpet players too. Um, and the funny thing is, like, you don't even need to play those super high notes. I guess, I guess for me, like, why I like to focus on range is not so much to get those high notes, but for me, it helps <laughs> the trumpets. Yeah, it's the trumpets' fault. Um, for me, it helps, like, everything below it feel comfortable, if that makes sense. Like, if I can play comfortable, like, if I can play up to a high F, like, to me, it's not about playing the high F. It's more like okay, now that B flat will feel comfortable, right? Or I'm not like worried about that B flat. So I view like the importance of playing in the high register, not so much for like wanting to nail a high note in a solo or something, but more just that all the notes below it are gonna be more comfortable. As well as I feel like for endurance too, right? Like playing lead trombone can be tiring. You know, if you're playing like all the, you know, all up in this register, like maybe that, that F to B flat register I, I mentioned earlier, like if you're playing in that constantly, it, it's pretty fatiguing, right? So I think also the importance of working into the higher register is just to have 
that endurance, um, the just being comfortable and, and having endurance up there. So that's my kind of two cents on that. Um, but yeah, if anyone else has any questions, I'll give you a second. Temperature control translates to the media register so easily. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's cool. Um, yeah, I'll give everyone like one more minute if you don't have any questions and then I'll get going for today. But I'm really happy that everyone joined me for this warm up session. Kind of turning into a little Q&A here. I'll probably do a Q&A next time. Um, I know some people had some questions for that, but we'll kind of save it for another Instagram Live. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining me today. Thank you for following me on Instagram. If you have not yet, go check out my YouTube channel. I have a lot of videos over there. Um, I have a few other warm up videos over there too that you can check out. I think I have like three or four maybe on the channel right now, as well as some other kind of like trombone lessons and educational videos. So you can go check those out. If you want to take a private lesson, please feel free to get a hold of me anytime. You can send me a DM. I do teach private lessons as well. So thanks again, everyone, for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Have a good weekend. See ya.